Hello, hello guys. Happy Sunday. Oh, I hope you're having a wonderful day. Hello, hello. Hello, Virginia and Linda and Suzanne and Lori and Cindy and Cindy <laughs> and Kay and Ann Burling and Kathy and Linda. So good to see you guys on. I know I missed a ton of names and Joyce and Carol. <laughs> hello, guys. Hello, hello. Ha um, happy Sunday and welcome to Sundays in the Studio with Moa. Not every Sunday, but I try. <laughs> um, hello, Linda. Oh, Virginia, thank you. Well, hopefully I'll share a bunch to fill up that notebook today. So, how is the weather where you guys are? It is 77 and overcast, but I can see the sun. A <laughs> little bit of blue sky. Um, let's hope we don't have an issue like, like we had last week. I don't know what happened. Did the live and almost done. Maybe, you know, a few minutes left and YouTube decided to stop working. So, um, very strange, Betty. Sometimes on your computer you need to get rid of the cache, you know, the things that are saved. Sometimes it won't bring it up, but hello, Elizabeth. And Carol and Molly Ann. Let's see. 86 and sunny in Florida. Sunny hot with the breeze in California. It's been really windy here too. I think stuff coming up from the Gulf. Um, yes, happy Memorial Day weekend. Lost me on Facebook. Oh, I'm still here, Cindy. Maybe refresh, come back. <laughs> I don't know. Rainy and cold here. 60 in North Carolina. Oh. Hi, Don. <clears throat> Excuse me. I think that's what was moving through yesterday with us, Bonnie, in Georgia. <clears throat> I got a frog in my throat. And moving your way, and we missed all the rain. We just had a lot of wind. So. All righty. Aw. <laughs> oh, Cindy, I love hearing that. I'm so glad that you have some of them already prepped with matte medium and thank you. I was just looking at my hair, which I redid at two o'clock just to make it, <laughs> and I can already tell the, the lights from my studio is, but it is what it is. I'm actually debating cutting it. So you guys leave me a comment. What do you think? Maybe, maybe four inches? I'm kind of thinking for the summer. <laughs> um, We'll see. I haven't decided. So, hi, Kathy. Okay, hello, Linda Safranco. We are waiting for rain in Virginia. Well, um, yes. Well, again, we were kind of hoping for some rain yesterday. My poor flowers out front need it. Um, but hubby just broke down finally and watered them because, you know. <laughs> Hello, Kathy in Tennessee. Good to see you on. And Doris. Um, hello, Patrick. Bonjour. Oh, hello, Chris Avola. So good to see you guys on. And Debbie Eckmeyer. I got people from all over. So make sure that you like, comment, and share. Let's see. <laughs> I still have to look through the bottom of my glasses. Um, to be entered into the giveaways, I'm going to announce the giveaway winners um, for last week's, um, was it last week? I don't even know, or the week before, um, for the winners for those, and then I have giveaways for this week as well, so, <clears throat> and I have to say, I got a nice shout out from Tracy Morrow yesterday on her live, and you guys showed up. <laughs> and shopped the water lily brushes, let me just say. Um, I still have a lot because I ordered a lot, but um, anyway, I, uh, I was amazed at how many orders came through for them, so I greatly appreciate it. They will go out on Tuesday, just spit. They'll go out on Tuesday since um, tomorrow's a holiday, federal holiday, um, and for those that do not live in the US, it's Memorial Day, so. Um, um, <laughs> well, Cindy, funny enough, as soon as I get home or when I'm like done with the live today, mine goes up in a ponytail um, because I can't stand to have it on my face or on me. So 
it is, if I've got bracelets on or extra jewelry, it comes off and my hair goes up. So, hi, Robin. Oh, thank you, Susan. I, you know, I'm kind of at a good place with it, but I feel like maybe for summer, if I got, you know, three or four inches cut off, it might, might be good. So, we'll see. Hi, Pat. 86 in Maine. Wow. Make sure you leave your hair long enough to put it up. <laughs> right, Molly Ann? Yes. I always think I want bangs until I get bangs, and then it's like, no. <laughs> and then I can't wait for them to grow out. So, but this shedding of hair. Um, <laughs> so, oh, thank you, Cheryl. Um, I won from Tracy and tried them out. Need to order some more. Oh, awesome, Bonnie. I did see that. That's awesome. Yeah, the, the water lily brushes are great. Um, like I said, I ordered, play with my hair. Now I have hair all over my mat here. Um, I played with um, some of them when I did a glass piece, oh gosh, last year, I think last year when I um, did some stuff for deco art with the glass paints, and they work beautifully. I'm sitting here looking at them, so, um, because somebody won a set of them, I won't say who, um, but anyway, I, um, they work great on glass. So I was very happy about that because I've not found a great glass brush in years. So, um, oh, and hi, Linda. And happy that your mom is watching as well. Oh, my goodness, Linda. I'm so sorry that you had um, hot water issues. Not fun, right? Home ownership's a lot of fun, right? <laughs> so I would say just shoulder length. That's kind of what I'm thinking. 80 and Buffalo, wow. So, uh, Marilyn, the water lily brushes are um, watercolor brushes that Dynasty came out with. Um, but they have a soft enough bristle that you can use them on glass, and it doesn't leave the brush strokes like you do, you know, if you use a stiffer bristle brush. So, I love them on glass, but you can use a mixed media watercolor, using your acrylics like watercolor. Um, <laughs> no worry, Georgie. No worry. So good to see you on. Hello, Denise. Um, all righty. Oh, Sherry Colgain. So good to see you on. Um, but you do you. Yeah. Yes. And a lot of times my, <laughs> my membership group will attest. A lot of times when I uh, go live and do the lessons with them, it's up in a ponytail. Sometimes, a lot of times, it's up um, and not looking great, but that's where I can wear my pajamas and paint and have my hair up, and <laughs> I know that the ladies in there don't mind, so, and you guys probably don't either, but, um, so, yeah, the water lily brushes are fantastic. Um, I hope you, oh, I am going to, thank you, Bonnie. Yes, I can't wait to see you as well. Um, I am going to share the things I have coming up um, in our little chit chat, little studio chit chat. And then I found some awesome, um, I, I can't look at the comments real quick, but um, I found some awesome supplies that I ordered thanks to somebody that posted it on Facebook. And I ordered them right away, got them right away. I've ordered more, I'm waiting for them. Um, but I'm gonna share those with you guys because they're amazing, they're amazing. So hello, Diane Hornberger, I hope you had a wonderful birthday. So, this is my thing, hi Deb Johns. Um, if I'm like at my good weight, like 30 pounds less, I'm okay with short hair, um, but, I kind of feel like the the volume of my hair <laughs> evens out the volume of everything else, if that makes sense. So <laughs> that's my story and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> Hi, Kathy. Oh, Eileen, no problem. They're recording. You can always find them on my YouTube channel. Uh, but funny enough, last week, like I said, it, it ended like right before I was finished. Thankfully, it continued on Facebook, and I was able to upload it to YouTube. So, 
If you go to live on YouTube, it'll show what I did live in all the comments. And then if you go to videos, it will show the whole thing. So, gotta love technology, right? Hello, Sue Braun. Anyway, so it's been a busy, busy week as usual. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Shoulder Lake during the summer, you can still put it up in a ponytail. Absolutely agree, Kathy, yes. Um, Oh, thank you, Bonnie. Um, and yes, my summer blonde, I got a little bit back in, but um, I'm, I don't know. I'm just kind of thinking maybe three or four inches. So y'all will see <laughs> on what I decide. So um, this week has been full of, um, of course, being in my studio, painting, designing, getting ready for seminars, which I'm going to share with you guys. Um, what I have coming up. And, and then also uh, prep for seminars, lots of prep, so prepping that. But on Wednesday, I decided on Tuesday um, that I needed a day for me. I needed a day to um, not get away from my husband, adore my husband, love my husband. Now that he's retired, he's, he's in the other room organizing all of my paints by color. I got some new shelving units. I'm going to share that with you guys soon. Um, <laughs> so that's been fun. Um, it, it has been fun. But, you know, when when the things that I've not been able to do for years need to be done, it, it, you know, it can't be done in a day. So it takes the time to stop and help and give input and organize. And <laughs> um, anyway, so I am... Um, uh, we've been organizing things, which has been awesome. But on Tuesday, I decided I, I needed a day for me to kind of get away. Um, I will ad be the first to admit that I'm a workaholic. I love to paint. I love to create. I love to design, doodle, you name it. Um, but I was, I was finding myself kind of um, feeling like I was on a hamster wheel. Do you guys ever get that way? And just needing a day to, to pause, regroup, find some inspiration. And um, I had wanted to go to the Monet experience in Atlanta um, for some time now. And it popped up on an ad on Facebook. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to go do that. And I told my husband, I said, I think I'm going to go do that. And I think I'm going to do it tomorrow. <laughs> because I know me, I would have waited and hem and hawed. And not made time to do it. Um, so I wouldn't say I'm real impulsive that way, but sometimes I get that way. Um, and that's a lot of times when I'm feeling a little overwhelmed or like I have so much going on um, that I feel like I'm picking up things, moving them, picking up things, moving them. You, you know what I'm talking about? You just kind of, again, on that hamster wheel um, or not being super productive, even though you're being productive. So. I went to Atlanta and I did the Monet experience. I did share a video on my Santa Meteor Designs page. I hope you guys check that out. And if you did and you didn't watch it to the end, watch it till the end because when all these colorful petals started flying up, I was just like, it, it was like chills on my arms. Um, it was magical. Now, I shared this with my group and I'll share it just as a, a comparison. I did the Van Gogh experience last year, and I have to say I loved the Van Gogh more than the Monet. Monet is probably one of my favorite artists, Van Gogh, close second, if not neck and neck. Um, but I thought the Van Gogh experience was um, a little more inspiring and kind of better put together with their video graphics and stuff. So if you're looking to go to one or the other or both, I highly recommend them. But if you have an opportunity to go to Van Gogh, go. You won't be disappointed. So, anyway. All righty. So, comments on Facebook. Oh, there they go again. <laughs> I call those diversions from my time to reboot. Yeah, you know, and it's it's one of those things that I've not allowed myself a lot to do. You know, a lot of time to do. Um, again, because there's so much going on. But at the same time, those days to regroup and re-energize and rejuvenate your, um, you know, the, that inspiration and stuff is so needed. 
um, especially when you're an artist. Karen Wilson, I'm so glad you're on. I've missed seeing your name. I hope you're doing well. I was going to reach out to you and see if everything was okay. <laughs> so, oh, yes, yes, Denise, yes, everything comes up, right? And everything is first. And, ev you know, so I tend to not take that time for myself. So I had a fantastic day. Again, I shared a lot with my membership group. I did lives while I was there and did a lot of videos, but I shared one and then a ton, ton of pictures on my um, Santa Make Tear Designs page. So you guys go check those out. And if you're watching from YouTube and you don't follow me on Facebook, go to my Santa Make Tear Designs page, give it a like and you can see all the albums um, and vice versa. If you're on Facebook and you don't follow me on YouTube, I would love for you to hit that subscribe button. So. Um, <laughs> um, oh, Karen, go out and come back in if my voice is out of sync. I'm going to be down on the tabletop here in a minute anyway. So, um, I have heard that, Cindy. I need to loan him out. Um, in fact, I was getting my nails done a several months ago, and there was a lady on TV. I don't even know what program it was on at the nail salon and the lady was cleaning house and people were watching and she has a YouTube channel with a lot of subscribers and people watch her clean. Now I have to say I was motivated to come home and organize, maybe not necessarily clean, but um, I was telling him about it and he was just like, oh, that's my kind of show. <laughs> so he just, he's a natural at it where I walk in and I'm overwhelmed. It's like, yeah, we'll do this tomorrow. <laughs> and years later, that's why it's in the um, situation it is. Well, it was two days ago, but right now it's looking pretty good. So, hello, mom. Happy birthday week. My mom is joining and her birthday is on Tuesday. So, right? <laughs> Today's the 28th. So, um, he's free, right? <laughs> Yes, I told him, I said, you should like start a, you know, a good husband's thing, a good dad thing, a, you know, a good organizer thing. And he's just like, oh, I don't know, maybe he really could write a book on all three of those things and it would be a bestseller. So he's amazing. I'm very, very blessed and lucky to have him. So hi, Karen. Hi, Lucy. Okay, guys. So anyway, I'd be his first subscriber. <laughs> Oh my goodness, I organized my paints a couple of months ago. Game changer, right, Tara? The thing is, he organized all of my media paints because he does my inventory now um, every month because he likes to have it done every month um, instead of waiting until the end of the year, which is great. Um, but he put it all in alphabetical order. And so when it came to my other um, paints, like all of my Americana, I want them in color family order, starting with white, you know, and you got all the yellows, the blues, the greens, and he's just like, oh my gosh, how many colors are there? <laughs> so he has cross-checked all the forms, the catalog, everything, and he's put them in, putting them in order, um, and I am very, very grateful. So, yes, Mom, I knew it was Tuesday. So, anyway, and like I told... I think I told my membership group, y'all don't send, <laughs> don't send gift cards through the post office. I have second envelope that I've had open and things stolen out of. I sent my sister a gift card for her birthday to Memphis. The last time I sent something to Memphis, it was stolen and the gift card was stolen out of her card. So I know I shouldn't have sent it. I should have just Venmoed, but anyway, just sad, 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 so. Anyway, all righty. Okay, Peg, is it your birthday today? I saw someone's birthday when I popped up um, on Facebook earlier. Please send him to North Georgia. I should send him on a tour, right? Or at least when I go, hey, Chris Wood, when I go teach and do stuff, maybe I should take him with me. And then he could, I could like hire him out to... <laughs> um, yeah, so I can be off teaching and he can be off organizing the, the seminar chairs per, you know, studio or paints or whatever. So anyway, all right. Okay, guys, we're going to get started. Got a great crowd on today. 
So happy that you guys are here. So let's take care of giveaways first. Like I mentioned, I have um, giveaways for today and then also for next week. But I might throw in some lives this week. I might. We'll see. I have a lot going on. But I, I have some things in my head that I want to get out because, like I said, when I went to Atlanta and I went to the Monet experience and saw that, then I decided if it was a sunny, beautiful day, I was going to go to the Atlanta uh, botanical gardens and so let me just pop these pictures up for you today so these are kind of what inspired me for my live today and what I thought I could talk to you guys about um, would be like taking something that inspired you and turning it into a creation so that's what I'm gonna do um, today for my little live demo now I'll be a thousand percent honest, I drew something out, but I don't know if I'm going to use it because I wanted this to be a little more organic where I just kind of start creating, which is one thing I absolutely love to do in my art journal. Um, so I haven't decided yet. We'll see. We'll see where it's going. And if I'm not liking it, I might switch to the other thing um, that I did draw out. I love echinacea, black-eyed Susans, cone flowers in general. And I actually caught, let me see if this one has it. Let's see, that one right there, you can see the bee on the flower to the right. And he landed just at the perfect time. I tried to get a picture of him in air, um, but didn't. So, but when he landed, I thought perfect. And then I got, again, an, a lot of amazing pictures, textures, patterns on leaves that I've never seen before. Um, and I left there so inspired and kind of invigorated. In fact, I was telling my mom yesterday, I wish she had been with me because she has a green thumb like no other. Um, and the orchid house there, absolutely gorgeous. So if you are around that area, I highly recommend that you make it to the Atlanta uh, Botanical Garden. So beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So I do have a couple things coming up that I wanted to share with you guys. So the first is, let's see here. Oh, I have this piece in pixelated palette. Um, and so red, white, and blue, of course. And you can subscribe. Unfortunately, they are going to be no longer at the end of 2023. However, you can order an issue if you want to. So you could um, get your April issue. Um, from them. All right. The next thing is I have coming up in Texas, I guess around the Houston area, I'm doing um, an iris and then I'm painting and that's done with acrylics. And then I'm also doing a fabric tote bag. Um, and I had these printed and then that's what they wanted to paint. So of course I had to paint it on a tote bag. So I was like, okay, let me get busy. <laughs> First off, I had to order a black tote bag. I didn't know what they were talking about because the ones on my website that are sold out and I haven't ordered them since the pandemic, um, were all printed. I, I got them done in Hong Kong. So, but I went ahead and painted. So this is the, the black tote bag that I'm painting with them. And then my iris piece, love this surface. This is a CD wood surface. So, um, oh, Patrick, Patrick, I just saw your thing on uh, YouTube. I can put a little something in that order for you too. I saw your post on Facebook for a little, maybe something that protects your clothing from painting. I'll pop one of those in there for you, okay? So, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so that one is in August. Again, that's in Texas. And then I'm also teaching at OKC Painting Palooza. Now, they have always had their conventions in October. They had planned to move them to August at some point. Um, and it kind of just happened because, <laughs> well, the things that, that just, you know, they didn't have the hotel. They had to find a new hotel. So it is in a new place. And these are the two classes that I'm teaching. And there's still room in both of them. Love my little scarecrow. He's based on a lesson that I did with my membership group. And then Ukrainian folk art is the other one. So that is 
at OKC Painting Palooza. And you can find out more information about that convention, the dates, the times, location, classes, the catalogs online. Um, you can go to their website and find that out, okay? And then I'm excited to be going to California in September. I'm going to be teaching in Hesperia, California, and I'm planning a little side trip to visit my friend Marianne um, in Temecula. So this class, um, or these classes, I should say, the one on the right, the Happy Fall, is a brand new design, and it does go with the family of this one. So this land that I love, I decided that I wanted to do a series with the stripes um, and kind of that center part being open. So that's where the, um, the fall design on the right there came about. Okay, hopefully I'm not giving you guys whiplash with all these <laughs> things popping up. Um, and then I have a Zoom class coming up with the White Mountain Decorative Painters Guild. Um, it's a Zoom class, and the one in Hesperia is also on Zoom. So you could join us um, live or on Zoom as well. All of them are recorded, and I usually leave the links up from anywhere from six months to a year. Okay, so... Anyway, so again, just to show you some of those, the one I'm doing in OKC, the um, um, Ukrainian folk art, and then also my Happy Fall Scarecrow. And this one, there are, let's see, there's one, two, I know you get at least two stencils in that class and a whole bunch of extras. So anyway let me put that oop, let me put that to the side and then this is the one that i'm doing in hesperia along with the bike that i did not pull completely forgot about pulling it so throw those on the ground um oh thank you kathy i have it madeline i'm waiting for you guys to give me maybe a time frame so um i would I would love to, oh, 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 Rochester, I know what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about, different. Um, I'm waiting to hear from them. So, okay, the first person on YouTube and the first person on Facebook that commented, um, I'll just put it up right there. So, Virginia Hedges on Facebook and Kay Merriman, if you guys will send me a message an email um, or go to my website and click on the contact button. Let me know what e-packet that's currently on my website that you'd like to get, okay? And I will send that off to you. So, um, I got those confused, Madeline. It just hit me what you were talking about. <laughs> okay, so let me come down here. I'm gonna move some things out of the way and we're gonna get started. So, last lives giveaway. Prezies. Um, I'll start with I'll start with the stencil set that I have. There's three of the um, CD Wood shape makers. Um, they are I don't know if they call them shape makers, but they're fantastic tools. Um, so like if you needed a corner on something like that, you could use it. You can stencil. You can block out areas that you don't want. Um, painted anyway so there's three of them this one has like rectangles squares oval circles stars hearts and the winner of those is carol doyle your name popped up on the wheel so let me know um your mailing address in a message and i will get those to you the other giveaway i had was <clears throat> excuse me um, some chip, it was a chipboard set or laser cut set. And so there's three sunflowers, three skeleton sunflowers, a bonus bee and butterfly in that one. This one has uh, 12, so six small butterflies, six large butterflies. And then these are actually MDF, and there's a small, a medium, and a large bee. Okay. So the winner of those is Carrie Henderson. Message me um, 
Oh, hi, Lori. I hope you're enjoying your vacation. Message me your mailing address, Carrie, and I will get those off to you. Okay? Hi, Pam from Florida. All righty. And then, finally, I had some brushes that Dynasty uh, gave me. I have another whole stash over there that I will be giving away um, slowly. But these are the new Water Lily brushes. They came out... I want to say right at the pandemic, right when it hit. Um, I love the way they feel. I love this pearlized coral handle. Um, a great filament bristle in it. Again, for watercolor, you can use them for other things. I like to use them for glass. And the winner of these brushes, the set of five, is Sandra Cavalier. Your name popped up on the wheel, Sandra, so message me and let me know your mailing address, and I will get these out to you, okay? So, the other things I wanted to share, I got some happy mail, and my very talented, incredible friend, Monica, paints these, uh, well, she paints beautifully, and she came out with these cards. So, I ordered some. Are they not gorgeous? And you can find her on um, Facebook. And she also has a YouTube channel. I'm just going to pop her name up. And you can, you can put her name into um, Facebook or onto YouTube. Um, and follow her. She is so talented. Very sweet. Um, and I cannot wait to send these out. I'm probably going to keep one of each because they're so pretty. Um, but Monica, got them. Thank you. Love them. Cannot wait to use them. So I'll move that out of the way. <clears throat> okay, now I saw this on um, Facebook, and I'm thinking it was, um, I don't know, let me switch my picture here, because it's, there we go. My second camera kind of locked up there for a minute. Okay, hopefully that it will <laughs> unlock for you guys on Facebook. I see that it is a little... Locked up there. There we go. Hello, Michelle. Okay, my second camera, for whatever reason, locked up. Okay, so I want to say it was Terry Casper on Facebook that posted this. And I had to, again, go right to my computer and order them. So this is a three-ring binder. I know my dear sweet friend Chris Avola is in the comments and I sent her the links um, as we were chatting earlier today. So what's awesome about these is it's it holds 30 pages. Well, there's 30 pages in here now, but look, you could easily put more pages in there. Does it hold 30? I think, no, I don't think there's 30 there. It must hold anyway. It comes with two stencils automatically. This nice little honeycomb, and then, um, what is that one? Buffalo check. So the binder comes with two stencils, but it is perfect for your six by six stencils. And so all of my M square stencils, my stencil line with Tracy Morrow, um, M squared is going to go in here. I literally just got it this afternoon, and that's as far as I've gotten. But I will... Oh, thank you for putting Monica's information, Chris. I will fill this up easily. And I already have more on order. So in the comments on Facebook, I know, not sure if she's going to put those on YouTube as well, but the link for where um, I got that on Amazon. Now, it's quite large, but I have to tell you guys, perfect for all of um, your stencils, your 6 by 6 stencils. Okay, so I'm going to move that out of the way. And the other one she shared was these, and they're a two pocket page, um, like page protector, and they're perfect for the Tim Holtz stencils. Now, y'all know, if you watch me at all, this is my favorite stencil of his. This Flourish stencil, I use it a lot. I have to hide it because I want to use it on everything. Um, but anyway, and I just put a piece of paper between them. Again, got them today. Didn't have time to load it all up, but I definitely will. Um, because I am going to get myself organized. <laughs> One way or the other. So, anyway. So, those are a great little find as well. And then, 
like I said, my, <clears throat> my journal is my go-to place to create. And this is the journal I use. Um, I like it that it has in and out pages. Now, if you've got an art journal that has mixed media paper, watercolor paper, and you don't have an in and out journal, I shared with on um, my YouTube channel months ago how you could take a pair of scissors, and I'm not going to do it, but you could take... Um, so, Pam, they do have sleeves that will fit 12 by 12 stencils as well. But the ones I ordered are four six by six um, on one sleeve. Okay, but they do have them for 12 by 12. So, when you click on that link that Chris put in the comments, um, you can um, go to the side of it and it'll show you where the 12 by 12 is. Okay, so if you've got a journal that does not, the pages don't come out, you can take your scissors right between the little metal brackets there and you can snip it. And then you'll be able to get them out and in. Now, the reason I love to do that is because I don't wanna mess up the pages. You know, if, I, if they don't come out and I'm creating like I do with lots of water, paint, etc., I don't want it to get on the page behind it, below it, in front of it, okay? Now, there are ways you can protect it, but it's so nice to be able to pull that right out of your um, journal and then put it right back in. Now you can pinch these, make it a little bit easier because those are a little fragile. You don't want to tear them out, right? Um, and I'll put in my Monet pages that I did with my membership group. So this month for us um, in our group has been all about Monet May. Um, and so we did some collage papers, created those, and um, so I just see that Patrick was asking about the Hesperia um, seminar. I will share that with you, Patrick. I'll message you. So if you go to my website and go under seminars and conventions, it'll give you the information, um, but you can join by Zoom. The classes are going to be recorded, and you'll be able to have that recording link for at least six months, if not longer. Thank you, Molly Ann. I appreciate that. So anyway, so we did a very loose, impressionistic, Monet, water lily pond um, lesson. We created some papers, um, our first lesson of May. And then we did this paper painting, impressionistic um, water lily. And this is all paper laid on top of the painted underpainting. So anyway, love, love, love how both of those came out. And they've been knocking it out of the park, the ones that have posted so far. So pretty, pretty. So let me show you the cover of this again. Mixed media. And again, the two, three paintings that I, or uh, pictures that I took of the echinacea while I was at the um, botanical gardens. <laughs> oh, you're welcome, Patrick. Um, inspired today. So what I did, like I mentioned, I went ahead and I drew something out, but I'm not 100% sure that I want to do that or if I just want to start on a plain journal page. So I think I'm going to start creating on a blank journal page and let's see where it goes. Um, the line drawing for this, this printable is going to be in my next newsletter. So if you do not um, subscribe to my newsletter. If you go to my website, which again is sandymctierdesigns.com. Let me just pop this up for you. sandymctierdesigns.com and sign up for my newsletter. You will be able to download that printable. Um, this one and then whatever I decide to do today. And then I have a couple extra goodies that are going out in my next newsletter. Okay. So again, Echinacea. Turning something that inspires you into a creation sometimes can be a little, ah, I don't know where to start, what to do. There's so much going on in the background. Do you need all that? No. Pick your focal point and what your focal point's going to be, which I know I want it to be the flowers. And I want it to be a bee. Now you can't see the bee in this one. It's pretty covered up. Um, 
So I'm going to share how I'm going to do that today and just let this inspire a creation art journal page. Um, again, it's not a 10 or $15 piece of wood that I'm going to ruin. It's on paper. If I don't like it at the end of the day, guess what? That's your best friend. <laughs> Gesso covers a lot. So what I went ahead and did was I um, gessoed a page just with gesso plain with a brush, washed it on. This one I did with a palette knife. And it's a little washed out so you can't really see it. Um, I think for texture I'm going to use this one. Um, this has nothing on it. And so let me explain to you when I'm working in my art journal. I will either take a page and gesso it either with a palette knife or completely brush it on because I want to be able to manipulate and move that paint around. If I put the paint on a blank piece like this, it's going to take me a little bit more to push that acrylic paint here and there. All right. What I did on this one was I drew out my design and then I put a layer of matte medium on it which is going to do the same thing for me. It's going to allow me to come in and paint on here. And the more I look at this, the more I want to paint this one. <laughs> you guys tell me, wing it or paint the, the drawn out piece. Let me know. <laughs> Joyce. Joyce said there's only five left. She ordered hers. Um, so, wing it, drawn out piece. Leave in the comments. Let me know. Let me know what you think. We'll go from there. Um, but that matte medium is going to allow that paint to be able to move and go places. Um, hi, Virginia man. Whereas if I did it just on paper, I'm not going to be able to move it around. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> wing it. Okay, let's wing it. I'm into winging it. So we're going to put my pictures here and there so I can kind of be inspired by those. Um, and I don't know if I'm going to have more than one flower on there. I might just have one big flower. Wing it, wing it, wing it, wing it. You guys are awesome. <laughs> so what I'll do is the one I wing, I will also do a line drawing for that. Okay, so let's zoom in. And again, this has gesso on it applied with a palette knife so that you get a little stuttering here and there. And what happens when you do that is the paint is going to hit those places that has no gesso differently than it does um, the places that do. Okay, so let's go ahead and get that and a big brush. So I'm going to get a three-quarter flat wash and I'm just going to get this kind of wet real wet I mean I want to see that water because I want to move this color around and I just noticed hold on <clears throat> grab my grab my palette here so I was going to put it on my um, silicone mat, but I want to be able to lift it up and show you guys when I need to. So, and I grabbed my white one instead of my, hello, my gray one. That's okay. Okay, brand new one. So, it's pretty wet. I'm going to use a combination of Americana and the Media Line. So this is Cobalt Turquoise Hue. We'll put a little bit of that out. Hi, Marie. Okay, and then let's get some greens. So I'll do some green gold and some sap green and my favorite color in the media line, cobalt teal hue. I do have these on my website. They are one of my favorite paints to paint with, quinacridone gold. And we're just going to wing it. We're just going to have fun and play. Um, and I have needed a play day in my journal. And um, after creating with my membership group the other day, I, I started to. And then, of course, you know, as things do, I needed to get back on my, 
regularly scheduled program, which is prepping for my upcoming seminar to Colorado. So we've got water there. Let's move that so I don't mess up my remote. I'm just gonna start picking up some color. So like the cobalt teal hue. And I think instead of painting it on, what I might do is I might just splatter or just kind of pop in some color here and there. Maybe a little bit of sap green. Maybe some green gold. So you see I'm very loose, impressionistic, just kind of popping that color on. Let's put in a little bit of that cobalt turquoise down here. Ooh, I love how that bloomed out. And then some um, quinacridone gold. Now I'm looking for, and I don't have, so I'm going to dip this into my <laughs> water basin, which means the color is gonna be whatever was in my water basin, which is slightly green. Um, but I'm just going to mist this with some water if this mister will work. Not real well, hello, there we go, there we go. Okay, and let's just kind of let that flow around and move around. We'll kind of do it to the left, to the right. So I wanna get some of that background in, almost like you know what you would see behind the flowers. Now, I'm not doing this painting. I'm not painting this. I want the um, inspiration that I got from this piece to kind of come through. And so winging it and not really having a plan in mind sometimes can be a little scary, but at the end of the day, if you just go for it and if you don't like it, gesso can cover some things up. Stenciling can cover some things up. But I mean, just look how incredible that background is right there already without doing much other than slip slopping some paint on there. Okay, so I'm going to let that sit for a minute and get um, Okay, that's a really good point Virginia just said. This is where she gets a, um, an analysis paralysis. That's a great way to put it. What I want you to do is when you're inspired by a piece or a picture that you took, um, again, if you're using a picture from the internet, you wanna make sure, because people have copyright, they have intellectual copyright on their photos. Just because it's printed and put it on the internet doesn't mean that it's for you to take. But I took this picture. So if I were looking at this, I would go to my colors and go, okay, I know I definitely need a white and I need a variety of greens and something that's gonna change the value of those greens, Payne's gray, black, soft black, asphaltum, some brighter green, some orange, right? So some yellow for the bee, some yellow for the leaves. So looking at your piece, start pulling those colors and line them up. And, and you'll start to see, oh, I could use this. I could use this color there. Um, so it's a, it's a great thing to print it off, look at it, and see where you go from just the picture to a creation. Okay, so I'm going to splatter some more of the quinacridone gold just because I love it. And we'll put some of that in. And then I do want this um, cobalt turquoise. I wanted it a little bit darker, kind of down in here. Again, we'll move that around. Don't be afraid to move it with your fingers. Lift it up. And it's quite wet. I'm gonna dry it here in a second because we'll wanna move on. But once you get something like that done, if you're like, oh, I wanna lift some of that color, I wanna move some of that color, take a paper towel and just kinda of tap it around. Take a stencil. Take some of that paint away, right? You can take bubble wrap. You don't have to have anything expensive. If you have a piece of, um, paper towel that has a pattern on it, lay down your paper towel with a pattern on it, okay? Now, I'm going to get, 
Let me see if I have it. I do. And I know I've shared this with you guys before. Metallic Luster um, is a paste that you can reconstitute and make into a liquid. Great point. Patrick said, you know, how do you avoid getting, you know, making it muddy? You know, you kind of want to, you know, use your colors together. Like I wouldn't use that green and purple together because that would definitely give me mud. Um, if you're unsure, instead of getting like what Virginia said, paralysis, analysis, paralysis, just go for it. And if you're like, Ugh, that's kind of muddy, you can fix that with gesso, washes of color. So I'm just going to take my brush into that metallic luster and that one is um, a little on the dry side let's see if i can get anything out of it there's a little but not much let me see oh i have a green one this one is lush green <laughs> i moved these out of my other studio because they were dry now there's a way that you can go to youtube and look at how to reconstitute these um with boiling water Okay, now let's dry this. I'm gonna move that out of the way. And you wanna make sure that dries before it mildews. Not cover it up. Um, and again, holding that up, letting those drip, just to give you some really cool effects. Use your finger and move it around. I'm gonna take my paper towel roll and just do that. <gasps> yep, that's what it needed. Did you see that? I just rolled it on and I have all that great texture from the gesso underneath. So I have a really washed out white spot. Let me cut this light and see if that helps. Maybe that one. Hopefully that doesn't make it too dark. So, yes, the Texas class, oh, the Texas class, I'm not sure. They're deciding right now um, for that hibiscus tote bag. I'm not sure if it's going to be on Zoom. But I will definitely post it as soon as I find out. Um, and they've made a decision. Ah, yes, Cindy. It's awesome when you see those things, right? So... Okay, so I'm gonna hold it up and hopefully you can see, let's see if I can turn it. Again, just that texture that you get in the background from where the paint hit where the gesso isn't and it hits differently where the gesso is. Now I'm loving the spot here and I'm loving the spot there, but those are the only two they need to, you know, and I need to put more in, okay? So I'm just gonna dry this and I like to lift it up because again, working on a journal page, it's gonna sweat. And I think I'll put some, I think I'll put some collage paper on here and also even that stencil that I grabbed. Maybe even a little stamping. Okay, so I'm gonna move that. And you just kinda wanna feel it, get that touch test, see if it's dry. And that's pretty dry. All right, so. I'm gonna take a little bit of my favorite collage paper, this Tim Holtz, and I'm just gonna rip it. I'm just gonna rip it and get some text here and there, kind of keep the, the straight edges maybe to the, the side, matte medium, and then we'll go back to that three-quarter brush, put a little bit of matte medium out. You can be generous with it, and then once you put that down, which is upside down, <laughs> so, and let's, this is the other thing. I might want my page like that. Nope, I want my page like that. Okay, so I'm actually going to do it down here. I usually will put my, if it has print or script, I will put it sideways 
or the right way around, but I typically don't put it upside down. So like I wouldn't put this piece down there. Um, I don't know, it's just a, a mental block, I think, for me. And not that you're gonna be able to see it or read it anyway, but, huh, that's good. June 29th on it. Alrighty, so maybe a third piece we'll do here. And again, generous with the matte medium down first, then the paper down, and then put that over it. I think I'm gonna do, definitely do a B, uh, but that doesn't mean that I can't have, you know, some of that butterfly in there. And let's get rid of that straight edge. It needs a little something something over here. Okay. Now, this is what I was talking about earlier about just playing and creating and seeing what happens. I know it can be extremely like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, guess what? I didn't either the first time I did it. But it felt so good to just play and create with products and ideas and seeing what landed and what didn't. And there were many journal pages that I did that were completely covered up <laughs> with gesso. So now let's dry that. Fantastic um, tip, Molly Ann on mud. She said there are two different things you could do if you're worried about getting mud. You can mix a little together on your palette. Um, and if they start to mud, you can blot them off and put different colors on. Absolutely. You can come back with gesso and using your palette knife, you know, put some gesso on, which I know I'll probably do today. But again, just look at all the different colors in there. And I just love that Tim Holtz collage paper. Again, if you don't have that, you can use regular tissue paper. Use your stamps and make your own collage paper. I've got several videos on my YouTube channel showing that. Okay, so we're going to let this kind of sit for a minute. And I'm going to get out um, that stencil again because I love it. And again, I love that quinacridone gold. So I'm gonna grab, did I grab one? Yes, I did. One of my um, Stencil Pro brushes, and I wanna get some fresh paint. So that has water in it. I don't want water in my stencil brush. So I'm gonna load that up, and then I wanna wipe almost all of it off. And then of course, my favorite part of that stencil is right there. So let's just get a little movement Again, I'm not going for the whole thing. I'm just going for pieces and parts. Again, just gonna add a little bit of color into that background, right? How fun is that? Okay. And I like to do things in threes, you know, kind of that triangle of design. So we'll put a little bit and flip your stencil so it can go the opposite direction. something something there okay again here there not everywhere okay I'm gonna put that to the side and then I am gonna come in I think because I know I'm gonna have a bee in the background I think I'm gonna put some of this um, honeycomb so this is I think M219 um, and let's just put a little bit of that in but I'm gonna change colors so when I use my stencil brush and I change colors, I like to do that. Um, old dictionary pages are fantastic. Yes, the sauruses, dictionary papers, old maps. I mean, who uses a map anymore, right? And you can find them at thrift stores and Goodwills and bookstores. So hand sanitizer, and I will change colors. That way I don't have to wash my brush out. The hand sanitizer is going to evaporate, and I'm ready for my next color. So let's put that and clean that up. 
Um, and then also for your matte medium, make sure you take a dry paper towel, just go right around that edge so that you don't glue the lid to it. Next time you go to use it, it will open. Okay. Um, so this, I think I'm gonna use that cobalt turquoise. Oh yeah, I'm gonna use that cobalt turquoise. So mixed media is all about layering. And the my favorite place, again, to play, create, see what lands, see what happens with um, whatever crazy idea I've got going on in my head is in my journal. So we'll put a little bit of that on. And you can't see it, so let's get a little bit of white. I don't know if white will show up in there, but we will see. And that's the thing. If it doesn't work the first time, you just move on to the next color. Okay, you can see that a little bit. Again, it's just gonna add a little interest into our background. Overlap things like your collage paper where you stenciled before. Maybe a little down here. How about if we go that way? Alrighty, so I'm gonna move that out of the way. I'm glad I had that sitting there on my desk. And then let's dry everything. Thank you, Molly Ann. Hi, Elizabeth. Have fun in Phoenix. Safe travels. So again, don't forget to like, comment, share. You'll be entered into the giveaway drawings. All right. So... Now, what I think I'm going to do is I want to cover, not cover, but put some um, something over this collage paper so that it's not just black and white. So I'm going to rinse my brush, and I'll probably get some of this cobalt teal hue and kind of put it here and there, but again, not everywhere. Use your fingers. Again, it pushes it back. Maybe a little bit of the quinacridone gold. I just, I love those colors together. They just work so well. A little splatter. A bit of more texture going on. Okay. <laughs> oh, the sensor binder is sold out. Oh, we'll have to keep watching, right? I just thought that was brilliant. When I saw it, I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to have that like right now. And thank goodness Amazon ships quick. So. Okay. Hi, Carol from Horse Pen. Where is Horse Pen located? Okay. Now, I've got stuff on the sides. I've got some, um, <laughs> Joyce's, hers arrives on Wednesday. That's awesome. Okay, so, but I am going to add um, maybe a little bit of stamping. I, I kind of want to put something in the center, but nothing as dark or as heavy as that. So maybe, um, what is this one? Ledger script. Um, again, I have a huge collection of Tim Holtz stamps on my website. So I think I will ink this one up just to add a little something something. And you can do that with stays on ink. It's not going to bleed. You can paint over it. You can paint. Um, you can do anything. The only thing that I have found that takes this away is hand sanitizer. Okay. So, and the other thing is once you get this, order that from Amazon and all you have to do is refill your stamp pad. Okay. So I just I don't even know what. Well, there's the number if you want to look online. But the way I do mine is I will just kind of go back and forth, rubbing that on the stamp. I'm not going for the full image. I'm just going for a little bit of the text. Okay. Again, interest in my background here and there, but not everywhere. Oh, I like that. Okay. 
I'll put that back on. Now, if I use that like I just did, I typically don't wash them. You can get stamp cleaner to wash them. You can also use hand sanitizer. However, if you do, um, make sure that you wash them with soap and water so that they don't become brittle and dry out, all right? So, and I just inked that one up the other day and got it all over my hands, so. But y'all know I don't mind this at all. To me, this means I had a fun, productive day. Okay, so. Let's take that. And then this is another tip, kind of what Pat, or Patrick had mentioned, like what if you get muddy and, you know, sometimes if I'm like, Ugh, I want to break the color up just a little bit or maybe you got a little muddy here or there, you can take gesso with a palette knife. And again, just to add another layer into your mixed media piece, um, a little bit on your palette knife, and then just add a little bit here and there. And that can just be part of your page. I don't like to do straight lines, but it just adds some lightness and softness to your piece. I know you guys have seen me do this before, but you can come in with your stencil and a paper towel or a baby wipe. You can take some of that away. Okay, we're just going to leave a little bit of that honeycomb right there, which is cool. And oftentimes, like I said, when I get done with my um, art journal page, if I'm looking at it and it needs a little something, something, oftentimes I will take that gesso and just do a swipe just to get a little bit of color um, uh, to break up the color that's in the background and to give it more texture. Now, you can always put more color on top of that. I'm gonna leave it, because I'm thinking wherever I'm gonna put my echinacea, and I haven't decided if I'm gonna do one big one or if I'm gonna do several. I'm kinda of thinking several. All righty. Um, um, my cardboard creating days, can I use it to glue? I don't see why you couldn't, Patrick, use that to, um, to put your Tim Holtz papers down. As long as it's a glue, what I would suggest before you ruin a project is maybe do it on a small little tester piece and see if you can paint over it, see if you can be a little rough with it with all your other products and stuff you're putting on. Um, I know the matte medium is definitely going to do the trick for me, so I've never worried about that. But if I'm unsure and I'm testing out a new product, I would certainly try it on something a little bit smaller, a little test piece. Okay. Oh, thank you, Cindy. Hi, Marty. Okay, so, I mean, look, that came together in what, 15 or so minutes? And it's the layers on layers on layers. The color we started with, the gesso that I started with, actually, and giving that amazing variation in color. And then the paper, the stamps, the stencil, um, all just brings it together. Okay, so I'm thinking, do I want to? Lots of decisions today. I think I might do... Uh, maybe a tall one here. And so I'm just going to kind of sketch out and then I'm gonna do it with an Identa pin. In fact, I should just do it with an Identa pin. So I'm just gonna get that little, and then these little petals. Again, I'm gonna put a line drawing printable for you guys on my um, newsletter that's going out hopefully June 1st. I'm not gonna be able to see those, but that's okay. I'll just wing it like we're doing today, right? <laughs> okay, and then my stems, I have to tell you guys, you've probably seen it on my designs. Sometimes my stems don't always 
match up, meaning they're a little thinner in one area, a little thicker in the other. I honestly don't care. I, I just leave them. But we're going to try and make it as uniformed as possible. All right. And then I'm going to come in with my pencil. Oh, that's a good point too, Virginia. I keep going back to y'all's things. Um, I, she said one thing, I just saw one thing I'm doing. Well, not wrong, but just, you're just stopping before. So she says she's kind of stopping like one or two steps before. Add, add, add. Mixed media is about layers. And what better place to create and do it in your art journal. And especially for us decorative painters, mixed media artists, watercolor artists, card makers. Um, play in your art journal. I'm just going to get some leaves on here. I think I will do that a little bit darker so that you can see that. And if you're just joining us for the first time, happy that you're here with us. Make sure to like, comment, and share to be entered into the drawings for our giveaways. All right, so we've got a leaf there, we've got a big echinacea there. I think I'm gonna do one maybe that goes off the edge here. I'm just gonna kind of draw the petals the way I see them in my head. And that might change when I get into getting the paint on there. The other thing is, if you're not using a pattern or something, an identipin is fantastic for doing something like this and drawing on your piece because you can always cover the lines with your, um, your paint. Make that leaf twist there. Okay, and then maybe, maybe one up here, but this one I want it to be... Um, or do we just do two and a B? I know it's odd when you do, or not odd, it's even actually when you do two, but I don't mind that, but it is that kind of things in threes. Um, hmm, let me think. I think I will put another leaf there. Because I want to get to painting it as well. So um, I think what I'm going to do is I will put like the, the bottom of the cone there, center. Yeah, that's what I'll do. And since I have that um, paper there, I'll go ahead and do that with pen. That one got a little thick, okay. So, thick end of the identipin, thin end of the identipin. I winged it and I winged wrong. I should have used the fine tip, but that's all right. Okay, and then we'll do a little. Okay, so there we have. If you count the B as your third end work, yes. <laughs> okay, so. What I'm going to do now is let's come in with some white paint. Um, so I just have snow titanium white. And we're going to grab some black. And nope, I'm going to grab some asphaltum and some Payne's gray. Because I'm going to mix those two together to make that a nice darker brown. Hello, got white there. <clears throat> okay, let me see if I can find, there we go. 
Hello, Deb Bloomfield. My comments on um, YouTube kind of stopped there for a minute. Oh, I wish I had done that in the fine tip, but moving on, not gonna fret about it. Let's get a flat brush. And I'm gonna pick up that titanium white. And I'm loosely, like loosely, going to paint in these petals. You could sit on the corner of the brush and push, pull, lift, just like you would a daisy. I've got a couple little, um, like little nicks and movement in those petals. So, just try and follow those. Remember, I couldn't see these petals. So, I'll do. How's that for winging it? <laughs> just drawing those out. I always worry, it's like, oh, I hope I can draw today. I never knew how to draw till I learned how to paint. And the more you paint, the more you see shapes and drawing will come. But I did a lesson with my membership group on that and how to, to look at the shapes of things and also how to create your own designs, your own layouts. Okay, so those are a little long. So I'm gonna come back with my wet brush. I just don't want them to be that long for it to make sense. There we go. And let's come back with a little bit of white on those. I don't care if you can see the outline. Again, this is in my art journal. If I were doing this on a, you know, a piece, well, I'll show you a piece that I just taught in Tennessee. So like this one, you know, if I had it drawn out with a pen, which you can still see the transfer line right there, you just cover it with paint, okay? So, but again, my art journal is my place where I get to play, create, try not to think too much, and just enjoy the process. A pattern can hold you back. So um, I say that because like, you know, winging those petals over there that I can't, couldn't see, just because it's drawn that way doesn't mean it has to hold you back from being creative. So if you don't like the shape of the petal, you can change it. I do it all the time. Okay, so, and then down here, come down. I went up there because I knew I'd get my hand in this if I started down there. And we're gonna let these dry. And then I'll um, show you that inspiration picture again. I don't know that I'm gonna do the leaves. Um, and I don't care that you can see through these petals. I'm, I'm probably gonna leave many of them where you can just see right through them and let that background show through. I do want to make these a little bit wider on this side, just because they're on that paper. Very pointy. Okay. Alrighty, so I think I will put another layer, especially since I went over those with that wider end of my pen, which is still aggravating me, can you tell? <laughs> A little bit more white. So here I said I was gonna leave them transparent. I'll probably end up making them more opaque. That's okay. Remember, we're just winging it. I needed a day of winging and playing and 
taking something that inspired me and um, just connecting with you guys today. So, all right, we'll do another one over here. These little guys over there, since it goes all the way around. I should have done one fully on, but that's all right. Okay. Oh, Eileen, it's just amazing. There's nothing that... Um, I mean, we know that it's proven. Creating takes away stress and anxiety. And um, this can be a little stressful and anxiety-ridden, I know, uh, for many that are afraid to just do it. But again, once you just start, it's so easy to keep going um, and playing. And again, if you don't like it, just so over it. Um, looking for my brush here. And I'm going to get the... Um, sap green again this is in the media line so it's going to be pretty transparent and I'm going to paint my stems just letting something happen and go with it instead of relying on, oh, this is what the directions say. This is what I have to do. No, you don't. Um, I'm gonna share another tip with you too when we get closer to being done. I shared this with my membership group um, on kind of getting your line drawings. If you need a line drawing from your photo and how easy it is to do that. So again, this is just sap green. Just gonna loosely paint in these leaves. Probably won't do a lot to them. Leave them pretty transparent so you can see that background behind. Okay, so let's let those dry. And I do have, oh, that's a pencil, I think. Let's see. Nope, it's pen. That's all right. I will take some white maybe a little blue in it and we'll just take that away for the most part okay so up here on these um, this cone part oh, just landed that look how pretty and prickly those that little cone is in the center the little center of that flower so um, I'm going to use some asphaltum and some Payne's gray and we're just going to kind of dab that on we want it to be dark first kind of dab that on and then up here. Again, not going for solid or just kind of texture and dabbing that shape of that center on. Sometimes on echinacea, depending on how you're looking at it, you'll get more of a cone versus one like in my picture that I drew from my picture where it's a little more round. Actually, this one's a little more oval. Um, and again, depending on how big that flower is, if it's just starting to bloom or the angle, you might get something a little bit more um, on the flatter, rounder side. And we don't want anything even on the edges, just nice and full of texture. Okay, let's dry those. I'm so happy to hear that, Eileen. Just go for it, right? Hi, Sue Potts. Thank you, Vicki. Hi, Gilbert. Yes, unfortunately, and hello to my girlfriends over at PM Artist Studio. 
Um, if you guys don't follow them on YouTube, you have to. Have great lives, very creative, very fun. Okay, I see something that's really driving me crazy. <laughs> and it could be this way. However, um, this stem looks like it goes there, but my center goes straight, right? So that's going to look off. It already looks off to me. So I'm going to round this out. And I'm actually going to make my tip of my cone a little bit more this way. So it looks like it's going that way instead of the flower going straight up. Now my stem matches that piece. Okay. <clears throat> and here's another tip. I'm going to make sure this is 100% dry. Is when you're doing that, and like I did the flower over here, and I did my petals that I really liked, and then I couldn't see anything, you can come back and kind of re-get the shape of those, which I'll be able to see now because my pen is going to go over that white paint. Okay, so now I can see the shape of those. So don't hesitate to do that just to kind of regain your shape um, and what it is that you're painting on. Okay, so I'm going to just outline these very loosely and roughly. And then I am going to come in and just do little lines. Where they meet that cone center. Okay, so again, just to give it a little bit of texture, a little detail. If you have a petal and you didn't put a little like little kink in it, you can always do that with your pen, even if that's not the way your painted petal is shaped. Okay. And then again, don't forget this, I'll pop this printable line drawing in my next newsletter, which again, hopefully June 1st, I'll send that out. A little texture there. Oh, we've got lines up here. All right. So look how fast that came together, right guys? And on the right side of the flower you just adjusted, can you add one more petal? This one, Michelle, tell me. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lucy. Just needs glitter. <laughs> right. Okay, now let me show you an easy way to do these centers. So I'm gonna zoom in. Let's get an angle brush. So I'm gonna grab, let's see what I wanna grab. In my brush stash here, I'm going to grab a quarter inch angle. There we go. Now I'll do a three eighths. Okay. So on these as well, I keep going back to it because I want you guys to see that lower left flower here. Put another petal here. <laughs> I need you in my studio, Michelle. Um, Okay, so look at the base of those petals. There's like a, um, a cast of light green on them, right? So I'm going to put just a little shading. So my angle brush on the toe of the brush only. An angle brush has a heel and a toe. So I'm going to load a little bit of that um, green gold. Okay. Yes, I see what she's talking about. She's talking about right there, like maybe one. Because what that will do as well, um, good call, Michelle. What that will do is it will, again, lend itself to the fact that those petals continue to go all the way around the other side. And we'll let that dry. So up in here, I'm going to come in just a little bit 
with that green gold at the base of those um, petals. And I said green gold, but guess what, guys? That's a little too yellow. So I'm going to wash that off. Take my brush, pick up a little bit of sap green. Let's see which one I like best. Hmm. I don't know. I think I'm going to do them both. And then a little sap green over it. Oh, yeah. Okay. And then, you know, Payne's Gray is my go-to shading color. So I will load up the toe with a little bit of Payne's Gray. And right between petals, so like right where this one lays over that one, pop in a little shadow. Maybe there, a little shadow. And what will start happening is you're going to see those petals separate form a little bit better, even though we've got them outlined. Maybe a little under there. Don't be afraid to use those fingers. Maybe a little there. And then like this little sliver of a guy that, right there. Okay. So I think I'll go ahead and shade these first. And then we'll come in with our little highlight at the base. And these centers, I'm gonna show you guys a way to paint those little centers with an angle brush, so easy. Pop in a little bit more of that white on this petal. It goes around the back. And then let's dry that. Thank you, Michelle. Outline that with our pen. Do a few little lines on it. And you could even, I wasn't planning to, but you could even take that um, Identa pen and do lines a little bit on those petals, like very thin. And instead of touching it and pulling the pen, if you kind of start doing that first, you'll get a little sketchy line. So to give it a little bit more of a a ridge in the petal for let's say something like the ridges you see here okay um, I have a um, an anemone I have a hard time saying that but an anemone lesson on my YouTube channel where I did the petals with Payne's gray so again very delicate kind of pull and flick that pen so you don't get really heavy lines and I kind of like that so guess what? My number one rule in painting is if you like it, leave it. If you don't, we'll figure out a way to fix it. And we'll make some of those wider that got dark. Again, just, and you, when you do that too, you wanna make sure you go with the shape of the petal. You don't wanna just pull straight lines. If it curves, you wanna curve with it. Okay, so let's come back. Hi, Brenda. Be safe on the road out there. Put a little shading in. That little guy there. All right, Okay, I'm going to move on from that. I know I want to brighten up some of those petals. Um, but the center, so what I want to do is I'm going to come in with some jack-o'-lantern orange. We'll shake that up. Can I mix? You can mix your own Payne's Gray. Uh, Tara, if you have like um, Prussian blue with a touch of soft black 
or black or um, primary blue with a touch of soft black or black makes a pretty paints gray. Um, let's come up and go ahead and do these so they have time to dry. Just to get a little bit of that coloring at the base of these petals. That was with the green gold and then I'll come back with the um, sap green. And again, on the angle brush, on that toe only. So it's not so in your face bright. Alrighty. So I'm gonna come here on the um, centers and I'm going to load up my angle brush. Again, I have a 3 8 but I might need to switch to a smaller, might need to switch to a quarter inch because I'm afraid they're going to get too big if I, um, that's a 3 8 Hmm. Let me find a quarter inch angle. There we go. I'll start with a quarter inch. I might switch to the 3 8 Okay, so I'm going to load it up with asphaltum. And on the toe of the brush, I'm going to pick up a little bit of white. And I'm just going to kind of tap that on my palette. And I'm going to start at the top. And I'm going to just pull. So what I'm doing is I'm pulling tiny little strokes like that. And see how I'm going out to the side, out to the side, straight in the center, out to the side. So, and I'm putting a little bit of white on there because I want the tip of that to show up a little bit more. I'm just going to, and the faster you go, the better it's going to look. You won't end up with a pattern. If you go line, 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 you'll end up with a pattern. Okay, so do yourself a favor and just kind of tap, move along. Turn your brush so that it goes out to the side, here and there. Okay, how fun and quick and easy is that center, right? So load that brush up again. And we'll come here and I'm just gonna start with the tip of that up here. So the edges of it, we don't want to see like a straight edge. It's not manicured. Um, and then we're going to brighten it up in a couple places. I'm, um, I'm not, Lucy, great question on the pressure. I'm like touching and pulling. Touch, pull, touch, pull, touch, pull. So I'm not pushing. I'll get a daisy stroke if I do that. I'm touching and pulling. Very, very light pressure. Fantastic question because pressure has so much to do with painting. Okay, and then let's come up here and we're gonna do the same thing. I wanna make sure that the top of that flower goes that way. Again, no pattern. We don't want soldiers in a row. We want these, you know, kind of intermingled and intertwined and speaking of soldiers, y'all don't forget to Reflect and remember all those people that thought. My late father-in-law was in the army, flew helicopters. My granddad was in the Navy and was on ships. Okay, so let's come back up here where it got a little on the um, kind of one color side, I will say, like right in here in the center, okay, a little bit more white. Okay, let's dry that. I don't know what that is there. Okay, so now we're gonna come back with that angle brush. I rinsed it out and on the toe, 
I'm going to put, you could do a wash over the whole thing, but I kind of want to control where I put it. So I'm going to put a little bit of the um, jack-o'-lantern orange. And I'm going to repeat. Now it's going to hit different on the white and on the asphaltum. So, okay, let's see if you can see that orange. Okay, so you get a little bit of that tint of orange. If we did a wash, you'd kind of get the same thing, but I do like the look. Well, I kind of like that. <laughs> yeah, I like that better. Can't go wrong with the wash, let me tell you. I'll just move that around with my fingers. We're just winging it all around today, aren't we? Just seeing what works, what sticks. Okay. Now, I'm going to come back with a brush with white. And I'll turn it around to keep my hand out of the way. Um, on some of these, I do want a little bit brighter white. So I'm going to just pull in with a little flat brush, a little bit brighter white on some of these. And you see how I'm kind of flicking it because I don't want to, um, I'm not using any pressure. It's just kind of a flick so that it skims that surface and picks up that color. I don't want to repaint them. I just want to highlight some of them. And if it covers up some of the lines, that's fine too. You could always put them back in or you can just leave some of them covered up. Again, takes away that cookie cutter, exact, perfect. I'm all about not having cookie cutter. All righty. Oh, Chris, thank you. And thank you for your cousin's service. Um, <laughs> thank you, Lori. It's definitely freehand, right? <laughs> Um, what was this question up here? Let me go up and see what, what it says. Are you, oh, that was the pressure one. Okay, just make sure I didn't miss anything. Okay, let's come in. I'm going to leave those alone for right now. I'm going to come in with that flat brush, and I'm going to put a little bit of the um, green gold on those leaves, a little on the stem. Again, just to add a little bit of a yellow color to them. Probably not going to do much else. I don't want to. I will on that one. It's got a flip. Okay, let's dry that. I'm going to zoom out just a little so you can see this a little bit bigger, a little bit fuller. I'm glad I did three. And I still, I think the centers need a little bit more orange. Hello, Teresa, good to see you on. Um, I wanna put a little bit more orange. So I'm just gonna kinda scumble that around. Make sure your page, when you use the heat tool, it's not still really hot. Um, all right, well, hold that paint exactly where you put it, okay. Now I am gonna come in on this leaf right here with some Payne's Gray and right where that flip is, right there, we'll do a little shading there. And then, let's see. Hmm, I am gonna come in, I think, let's do a little bit at the base. I like to have the base of my leaf a little bit darker, just kind of grounds, um, I don't know. I just like it, that rounded part to be a little bit darker. We can take some of that up that bottom side there. And then I think maybe, because it is transparent, I will use a little bit of citron green. Because I like the, um, 
I love the yellow hits here and there on these leaves. And maybe even, hmm, let's see what that looks like. Bahama blue, because those two colors together, guys, look really pretty together. They look great mixed together. Um, they make a really pretty green. So a little Bahama blue, a little citron green. It might be a little too bright, but we'll see. I might put it on and wipe it off. Or put it on and rub it around like that. Let me see. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. Just going to use citron. Yeah, just a little citron green is what I'm going to put there. You could always come back and paint them, you know, like you've seen me paint leaves before. I'm going to do a little dry brushing on them and call those done. A little bit of that citron down the stem. I'm not even going to do that center vein, I don't think. I'm just going to leave it like it is. Alrighty, and then this one, yeah, I'll put a little bit of that lighter there. I'm using an angle brush because it's what was in my hand, so I'm going to put a little bit there. Alrighty, let's leave those. And I'm just going to grab a small brush and I'm going to load it up with white paint and I'm going to, hmm, I think I'm going to put it right here. Let me see, where do I want to put it? My B. I think I will put, I think I'm going to put one right here. Kind of tap on that little B body shape, white, and I could put them out. So I could do three, but I'm I'm not. I'm just gonna do one, and I like to start with white. Um, so the green gold, it was a little brash and in your face. I did put it on um, at first, and over. The citron green will give you a more yellow look than what I was getting when I just put it over the um, sap green that was there. Okay, does that make sense? So it would give you a little bit more of a yellow um, cast, which is very pretty. So feel free to do, you know, put a little citron green on and then put that green gold over it. Um, same thing when dry brushing, because I'm going to dry brush, and I'll put some of that over the dry brush as well. You always get a much more vibrant color when you put it over it. Um, okay, so back to the B. I'm going to find a liner brush. What is this? A Zero Rigger. That'll work. And I have Payne's Gray out, um, or do I have, I can get some black, but I have Payne's Gray, so why not? And we're just going to pop in a little. Black for our B. And I'm just kind of tapping on his little sections. And then we'll dry it. Hi, Heather Hope. Good to see you on. Okay. Then I'm going to come back with white. Let that dry. Kind of just. And then um, I will probably use some Hansa Yellow Light with a little bit of Diary Light Yellow to shade him.
you know, and you could stencil on a word, put a little saying. I haven't decided what I'm going to put on mine, if anything. So when that happens, when I'm not 100% sure of what I want to put on there, I usually just leave it. And then when it speaks to me and says, oh, you know, put da-da-da, then I will put something else on it. But I think that's what we're going to do is just leave it. I do like my bee on this one that I drew out earlier where he's kind of, you know, hovering over that flower like it's about to land, similar to the picture that I took. Um, and then we'll come in with our quarter inch angle, some Dari Light Yellow. If you don't have that, Saffron Yellow works great. Um, oh, hello. I got enough to paint every bee in America and then some. All right, a little bit much. But we just want to get a little bit of that shading. And I just went right over the black as well because, hello, you can't see it. So then white. Let's dry that. Hi, Carrie. And then we're going to just pop in some wings. I think I will pop in his wings over here. And I am not going to do legs. I'm not going <laughs> to. I probably will go around his wings with the Identa pin just to make them stand out a little bit more. And the fine tip at that. Hi, Liz. Thank you, Molly Ann. I was just about to tell her that. So we'll get some of our little wings on there. Okay, let's dry brush a little and then we're gonna call it done. So I'm going to take my um, medium mezzaluna, pick up a little bit of white, and wipe that off on my paper towel. And this is where I'll come in. So if you missed my last Facebook Live, we did a lot of dry brushing with the mezzalunas and then um, layering that color over top to just add incredible um, just coloring, dimension, everything. So. Okay, so just a little bit of white here and there. And then I'll just come back with that flat brush with some green gold. And just do a little bit of a wash on that. See how much brighter that is? A little bit here and there, but not everywhere. Again, use your fingers. And if that's too bright in your face, you're like, oh, I need to tone that down, a wash of sap green right over it. Okay, it's just playing and having fun and seeing what works and what needs to be tweaked. Right up underneath here needs a little shadow. Speaking of shadows, Y'all know how much I love a good cast shadow, so let's do them. Payne's gray, and I don't know if that's black or Payne's gray, so I'm going to be on the safe side. Very wet brush. Very inky paint. So water mixed with it. And then I'm going to, well, I washed too much out. Okay, that's too dark. So what you can do is you can do that. Soften the look. Um, not under every petal, but certainly under some of these that 
And you could take that and wash it right onto the petal. Again, just give it a nice little shadow. Let's zoom in just a little bit from that petal over there. do. Almost like the light's just hitting right on it. So everything's going to get a little cast shadow. And then I love to do it like on the side of the stem. To me, it just, it elevates that journal page, takes it to the next level. And that's what I try and do on all of my um, journal pages, is just be inspired by something, play with product, have fun, try not to overthink or you know stress. Um, and just have fun creating. Okay. I think we're going to, I could just sit here and play with shadows all day. Um, let's put a little one under our B. thing and then we're done. <laughs> I say one last thing. Hello Sandra Cavalier. Guess what? You won one of the giveaways. So message me your mailing address and I will get that off to you. Oh thank you Teresa. Thank you thank you. So this, this kind of basically is, you know, what I do for my lessons and stuff, again, for my membership group, is um, try and show how you can just take inspiration from something and create something from that. Um, loose, quick, not on an expensive surface. But if I wanted to take this and I really liked my design, I could take it to another surface. I could take it to another piece, um, which I think this one would be beautiful, like on a... Um, a six by 12 long panel or something. I think that'd be really pretty. Okay, I'm gonna take a baby wipe, wrap it around my index finger, pick up some, ooh, you know what? I was gonna use Payne's Gray, but I think I'm gonna use, um, let's see what this looks like, Quinacridone Gold. Oh, thank you guys. And if you want more information on my um, membership group, you can go to my website. Let's see if I'm gonna like that. Okay, I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do. That's quinacridone gold. I'm gonna use that. But then I'm gonna come back and neutralize it a little. These little tabs, just kinda of touch and push off to the side. So if you're kinda of wanting to, you know, dive into mixed media, art journaling, decorative painting, um, whole bunch of just getting out of the box, out of the norm. That's what my group's all about. Okay, wrap that in a different place. Now I'm gonna come in with some asphaltum. And then I'll do, oh yeah. So that's just gonna really kind of intensify that, that oranginess, which is gonna pull more of that orange out of the center. Yes, yes, yes. Around those corners. This just gives it a little bit of a vignette look, kind of tied in. I typically do that with um, Payne's Gray. All right, so let's zoom out. It could use a little more splatter, it could use a few more bees, but guess what, guys? That is going to be, for right now, finished. <laughs> um, thank you, Molly Ann. Okay, so let me 
pull my chair back up and then show you where we started from, kind of our inspiration, my inspiration piece from uh, the Atlanta Botanical Gardens and, you know, creating, making a mess, but playing and having fun, <laughs> right? So let me come back up here. If I add anything else to it, bees, whatever, um, I, I'll post it on my um, Facebook page, but I'm also going to post it in the newsletter with the line drawing from this one and the line drawing from that one. Okay, so be on the lookout for that. Again, if you don't subscribe to my newsletter, you can do so on my website, which I've got to look through my glasses weird so I can see it right there, sandymccuredesigns.com. And don't forget, if you're in my membership group, you have your own link. Um, but if you're not, then you can use the link A-R-T, all capitals, ART, hit apply for a discount on my website. Even things on sale, you can get a discount on, okay? I'm super pleased with that. Um, not bad for winging it, right? <laughs> I always hope and pray it's gonna work out. So I'm gonna leave you guys with a couple of pictures um, and then just something I like to tell you guys at the end of all my lives. Get those brushes out, get that paint out, especially if you're not feeling it, one of my, sweet, sweet dear Linda was not feeling it, hadn't painted in a while and got her paints out and forced herself to sit down. The longer you allow yourself to not create and not paint, the easier it is just to not do it, right? But then once you get into it, the joy and all that just comes back. So get those brushes out, get that paint out, do something creative. Again, have a wonderful Memorial Day weekend. I'm gonna leave you with some images that were painted actually by someone in our family, Lucy McTeer. If you look up McTeer art, phenomenal artist. Um, and this is in a little town in Georgia called Wrens, and she painted this on the side of the post office, and it's just magnificent. So I'm going to leave that with you guys. Have a wonderful day. Have a great week. Be creative, and um, thanks for joining me. Bye.